because I just be binge watching this stuff. <laughs> but um, for those, uh, let us know a little bit more about what's going on with you and your personal life before we jump into today's topic, because I feel one thing that separates you from the rest is your transparency and the way you talk about what's going on in your life and today we need that we need more transparency so let us know a little bit about what's going on with you right now well i am uh i often share when people say like how you doing my truth is sean i'm doing better one day at a time um having a sister commit suicide last year then eight months later losing my father last living parent was really challenging and i found myself in a very dark place um definitely a state of depression and you know the i'm grateful that we've evolved in our in, in being a believer in christianity to where we are we, we can we can actually no longer stand in the reality of or this idea that we're too blessed to be depressed and too blessed to be stressed because it's not a truth and it's a it's it's a lie in fact that intervenes and intercepts our ability to get the proper help and heal and so I sat in a place that is least to me and to probably many where I was, did I didn't want to do anything. I had told God, I said, let me explain something to you. Okay, I know you got this whole great and amazing purpose and stuff for me, but I'm going to need you to table that and get it to somebody else. Amen, because I'm not interested. I don't want to do anything else. I had never felt this way. And I lost my mom at the beginning of this journey, Sean, when we first met. You know what I'm saying? And that was years ago. And I did not mourn the way I mourned then. And so sometimes, you know, people try to um, synchronize our pain, synchronize our experiences. And that is what makes people feel like they're doing something wrong instead of doing something normal or doing something that God can transform. And so my reality was I didn't want to do anything. I was trying to get, you know, I was trying to keep getting out there and intercede and and post the message and inspire. But God was like, it's okay, sis, to just sit down and just be. And so I had to realize and I posted it because it was so pivotal for my walk that my ability to just be was not a contradiction to my purpose. It wasn't running interference on my on the plan and, 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 and what God has for me to just be. And in the season, my God, and it lasted longer than I wanted to, Sean. Can I tell the truth? My God, I just was like, all right, is it over? Because I'm ready to get out this dark place. And it did not happen that way. Mm-hmm. But I am grateful it did it <clears throat> because I was able to learn so much about myself. I was able to, as always, I feel like I have such a great relationship. Like God is my bestie because I can be honest. I, and God ain't expecting nothing less from me than to be honest, you know. And so I have removed myself from that idea of so, you know, showing up perfect and stuff. Let me tell you, I was struggling parenting, Sean. I was struggling in relationship because people be like, oh, you know, when people love you, they should just be able to show up as specific. I'm like, my God, I was raggedy, Sean. People's like, ooh, really? You so dark? And I pray and ask God to re- 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 redeem me from this. I say, well, amen. Because I'm praying too some days, because all the days I wasn't praying, Sean. I wasn't trying to talk to God all the time. Okay. I wasn't. I was just trying to get through the day. I was trying to breathe. You know, so I am honestly well. And that that is really what transformed yet again uh the mission. That is what began to impact people. You know what I'm saying? Was just being able to tell people my reality, you know, I, you know, me. like, I'm just going to tell you the truth at the end of the day. And if my truth evolves, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I love it. Thank you for, uh, for sharing that and, um, condolences for your losses, yes, because I know, uh, it, it can be challenging at times. And, and one thing I've learned over time is to let people be where they are. And if they are grieving, like you don't have to try to fix it you could just be there yes yes just be present true story Mm -hmm. that's all sometimes it might be a hug sometimes not who knows Yep. you know it just depends on what you need at that time and be uh, absolutely uh submissive to to the need of of the feeling yes so yeah i I, i'm I'm learning (laughs) 
<laughs> you and me both, because I had to submit to my own feelings. You know, I tell, I've, I've shared before, I had watched the, I'm probably going to get it wrong, but I watched that little cartoon show where uh, Inside Out, I got it right. I love Inside Out. Love Inside Out, especially for the, you know what I'm saying, the intellect and the sapiosexual world. We be in there like, <laughs> so much in there. I was taking all kinds of notes. But um, I realized that I'm not like, Joy, I don't think any other emotion got a place here. Wait, you're intervening. You're, inter you're, you're, you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're not in your rightful place because joy is the primary the, you know what I'm saying? The the absolute, we the king of king. You know what I'm saying? The the joy. Meanwhile, if it weren't for fear, if it weren't for, um, um, if it wasn't for fear, if it wasn't for sadness and things like that, there is certain maturity that we wouldn't move through. There's certain, um, there's certain experiences we wouldn't even know we can overcome. It wouldn't drive us to have certain passions and things like that if we didn't have it. So this was my least favorite season but it was the most impactful for me. So it's it like you said, I had to learn how to submit to those feelings too. My God, like seriously, I was like, uh-uh, I don't want to be anything other than happy. Mm -hmm. And that's how we also, sometimes we have, we have concluded that God's greatest work is being accomplished because we're happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that some of God's best work, honey, is 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 that positioning of sadness or or anger, the state of anger. Because the Bible says, "Be angry, but sin not." So mm -hmm. it's telling you, it's giving a command: be angry, just don't sin. That anger may drive you to do something, change something. And if we live in a state of joy where we can be happy and content in all things, it may not drive change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love that because I think we we well I think we're starting to somewhat maybe turn a corner a little bit as far as yeah. the mental health piece and yes. things of that nature yeah. and allowing yourself to feel because I get a lot of inboxes with people who are in relationships I guess I'm kind of pivoting a little bit who they're with someone who might have lost a loved one and yes. they don't know how to love that person in that season or they don't know how to give this person this need so they're thinking because they aren't up to par or they're not used to seeing this person like this how do i navigate this with them Ooh, that's a whole journey right there so for me my partner he is similar to me in the sense that he thinks, you know, we, we, we are most appreciative of joy. So it was challenging for him to have to redo his mind to see me in the light of where I really was. And the disconnect, believe it or not, from that caused me to feel unsupported. Because you would miss what I really need by seeing me the way you want to see me instead of seeing me where I am. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I began to write about because like you're saying, some people just don't know how to do life with that. I remember coaching a couple of years ago and she had lost her mother and it was time passed and her husband was like, well, I don't understand why we're still here. And it wasn't his exact words. Mm -hmm. He wasn't insensitive about it, mm -hmm. but he was insensitive in action because he wasn't as sensitive. And I remember not having the experience, um, I mean, not not having the, the experience, yeah, and not having the experience of, of the partnership while mourning. But I remember telling her, just even from family, friends, and what have you, it didn't matter. Like, it is extremely important to be honest with where that person is, not where you want them to be. Mm. And so, like you said, sitting there listening sometimes may be the value add. That may be the win, just being able to listen. Sometimes it's the hug. Sometimes it's simply sitting and not rushing off to go do the task that you feel like is pressing for you because your ability to be present means something. You know, there's so many things. It's not one size fit all. And every day is not the same, Sean. And that's also the hard part. 
is that on the days <laughs> you can feel bipolar a bit, but it's very normal because our bodies can, it has a capacity, our heart has a capacity to occupy joy and sadness, anger, frustration, and everything all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when I'm existing in the state of happiness, it may confuse you to think that I'm not sad. So you move through. And then when I have a sad day, you're like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. With the, you know what I'm saying? Not with the, not insensitive, but not as sensitive. And so, and I'm looking like, what do you mean what's wrong with me? My sister died. Dad's gone. My mama's gone. It emphasized my mother being gone, losing my my mom, my sister. And then it emphasized my sister-in-law being gone. It started emphasizing because all in the same span of time I lost or in a um in a within a span of time from my mother, I lost like all these other people. And so it just started emphasizing all these losses. And he looking at me like, what's wrong, honey? And I'm like, I'm just having a rough day today. And he's disconnected because he didn't see me happy or exist in a state of happiness for several days, even a week. And then he like, what did I do today? So it's, 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 it's um, I would say it would be good to also be flexible, be open, but remain conscious because those moments can pop up at any moment. There are things that trigger that I may not have ever been thinking about. I don't sit there mulling over you see what I'm saying? My loss. Mm -hmm. But it can trigger certain things. Sound, smell. People tell you that all the time. Certain things can trigger. And next minute you know, it could be a down moment. Or it could be a down moment. Mm -hmm. And it's a down moment. So, so to, to your point, like, you know, navigating, being with a partner who has suffered some type of loss is challenging. But can I share one more thing? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I found that it was also helpful for me to remember that my partner's not my therapist mm. because as much as I am all about like oh be present for me I, I'm still a very conscious person of how is this condition that I'm experiencing affecting my partner and what's unrealistic expectations because that's setting myself up to fail Sean mm -hmm. that would be setting me up to be disappointed or hurt or feel like I'm unsupported when it's not that I'm unsupported, it's that I have an unhealthy expectation. So I didn't expect my partner to be my therapist. And I knew also sometimes there were certain connections because he didn't have the experience of meeting those family members that sometimes the value was gonna come for me. That moment of affirmation or support may come differently from somebody who knew those people. So I may have to shift some of that support, the need of support to someone else. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and, and I, I love that you talked about how, you know, he, he shouldn't have to be your therapist. I love that because even sometimes I find, cause I, it, you know, my wife, she has her individual therapist. I have my own therapist and then we have a marriage therapist, right? So we just therapied out around here. <laughs> if that's a word therapy out. But anyway, I've learned that sometimes I'm like, am I putting too much on her? I have to be conscious enough to think like, okay, she's my wife. She's my friend. She's my therapist. She's my freak. She's this, she's that. She's that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Let me, let me be conscious enough to, to, to pull back on some things. Am I overloading her on top of her being a mom on top of her being a sister all these other things and wearing these different hats and we can wear people down so having that consciousness being aware enough to to think twice that wait a minute you know because i think now in relationships we go we we have romanticized that my spouse or my significant other should be my everything just balled up in one big yeah right and we never really take the time to think okay that's just, that's why i should have friends that's why i should have a therapist that's why i should have a hobby that's why I should be able to spend a long time, you know, those things. But if there are some insecurities, that's when you start to try to grab closer to the person when you, when you have insecurities, you know, but when the relationship is secure, you can, you can live with, with your hands open, you know, because you're not worried about what they're going to do, do, or, or your certain kind of attachment style, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm glad you said that. Yes. 
that's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you about, uh, because there was a video where you talked about um, the heart. I think it was one of the, your recent videos and you're talking about how we can't see people intentions because I think intentions are very, very important because in our heart, when we're doing something, we like, I, my intentions was this, but you might have took it the wrong way. So can we kind of talk about um, miscommunication? in relationships can we talk about communication in general because i think this is an ongoing thing i get so many inboxes on communication what is your biggest tip for communication and how can we fix communication to make it uh, uh to where we can have better communication skills oh <clears throat> so communication is exciting to me <laughs> uh I would say, listen, you have to recognize that everybody ain't excited about communication. Mm. For some people, it is a trigger. For some people, it feels very much, it reminds them of getting in trouble. It reminds them of what they're not good at because mm. communication itself is a it provides a feeling. Mm -hmm. And if a person is very familiar with receiving negativity, if they're receiving criticism, if they're very used to receiving, um, you know, feedback, constructive criticism, then you think you're just communicating, but you're triggering them because they've not had a good experience with communication in a general. Mm. So that's one thing. That's to me the foundation of really considering when you communicate, who are you talking to? I love communication. It is exciting. This conversation was exciting. Not just because it's purpose, but because I like to connect with people and I get to talk to Sean. But for some people, this isn't talking to Sean. This is a very... Some people, when you talk, when you say interview, the idea of talking is like, oh my gosh, I'm sweating bullets because it's anxious. It's what are they going to ask me? That's why some people say, send me the questions in advance. I don't want to be caught off guard. <laughs> me, I don't care what you ask me. I'm going to share. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't see this as, you know, for some people becoming uh, transparent makes them sweat. Because you're asking, I didn't get to prepare my mind and my heart for what you're asking me to share that might be considered embarrassing or just simply personal. Mm, it's scripted. It, it needs to be scripted so that way I can protect myself. There you go. So communication is heavy. And we make it think, we, we, we act like it's so light, y'all. We act like it's nothing. You see what I'm saying? But it's not nothing. It's everything. And... One of the key things that I tell couples when I coach them, are you asking enough questions? People don't ask enough questions if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Because you can more than likely find out what you need to know by asking the questions versus projecting, assuming, or trying to get ahead of the answer by, I'm going to speak it for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it was shine, if it were you shine, you'd be like, "Oh, um, you're probably hungry, right?" <laughs> yeah. So I'm getting ahead of seeming like I'm gonna be wrong or miss the mark versus stating, "You know, are you hungry?" Because for some people, the "Are you hungry?" Pr produces a response that's like, "You should know of it." Mm -hmm. So if I show up, kind of giving my answer in my question then I've made it seem like I won't be wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, communication is heavy. It's just so big, it's vast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I must say that questions is probably number one when it comes to how can we position ourselves better within our relationship? Ask questions. But even asking questions, do you know what some people have said? What's that? Makes me feel like I'm being interrogated. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh. I have to, I have to, you on fire. I don't want to put the fire out. Go ahead. But this just took, you saying this just took me back to a time where I was talking to uh, my wife. I said, we were dating kind of, we were like, yeah, we were, we were in a dating stage and she got to asking me questions and I said, I had to share, share something with you. And I was telling her about how I was sexually abused as a kid, right? I didn't really want to talk about that in depth, but I wanted to let her know everything that went on in my life. Now, here's the issue. When she started asking more questions, I felt like I was being interrogated because she was going behind the yellow do not cross tape. So then I'm thinking, I'm feeling you're interrogating me. And it almost caused like a point of contention for us because i'm like why you keep asking <laughs> again why you keep asking all these questions so you saying that my god yeah it just took me i said wow that is so true i love that and the thing about you talked about assumptions and i realized too with assumptions is lazy communication because you like you said you already set yourself up for the answer right opposed to asking instead of making an assumption because you know what they say about making an assumption absolutely the first three <laughs> letters honey the first three letters right just take the time to ask now you have to be intentional and now you have to be uh, an active listener opposed to just making an assumption because you can draw up your answer already when you make an assumption absolutely and it's not you being able to get to know your partner mm. That's not you getting to know. That's actually you projecting. Because sometimes when we've been in a relationship before, we make the assumptions based off of our prior experiences. And I had to learn, and I try, and I, I put it in a workbook for women, get to know the man you're with, not men in general. <laughs> because that's a, and of course it's valid for women as well, you know, meaning for a man, get to know your woman versus women in general because sometimes people pride themselves i know women but do you know your Mm. i know men but do you know your man so while i can pride myself on knowing that there are certain issues a list that may bother men or things to be conscious of when it comes to a man when it comes to my man i'm asking questions i want to get to know him i want to get to know what's specific to you and I, and I do my best to make the separation. Like, I don't want to bring in my overview, my overall perspective when it comes to the details of who he is, how he exists, and what works for him. Mm. Because there are many things, believe it or not, that'll blow people out the water once they get into the details that, that does not apply to their partner. You know, you'd be like, oh, you don't like that. No, absolutely, I can't stand eggs. Don't make me no eggs for breakfast. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, you want rice for breakfast instead of grits? Yes, I would like rice, please and thank you. You just never know. Mm. That's good because I wanted to ask you, do you think that, because the thing about communication is, I think what, what we're conversationalists, we love to talk. And my thing is, I try to, again, pull back on some things when I'm talking to my wife because I'm like, you know, so, 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 and I'll just be running and she, I'm on my Kanye rant, right? I'm just <laughs> I'm going to town and she's just listening. But I realized over time, it's it's just good to just sit back and listen. Just listen. And can you give your significant other a blank slate? And what I mean by that is, like you were saying, instead of everything, this excessive baggage or baggage that you've had from previous relationships, is it possible to to have a clean slate when you're going into a new relationship? And what I mean by that is putting past experiences out your mind. Um, or is that something that you do over time? Because I think you have to be conscious enough to be like, this isn't Lisa. <laughs> This isn't Bob. This isn't Bob. This is not Bob. <laughs> right. 
Right. So can you give can you give a, a, a clean slate to to your significant other? Um, and if so, how do you do that? Can you? I'm gonna be honest. So I was just talking to somebody yesterday, and I said, for us to have this burden of not comparing, it's a lie, y'all. It's a lie, Sean. Let me, and this is the same example I gave her. The Bible says, greater things will you do also. That's a comparison. Mm. That you will do greater than what was done. Mm. That's the comparison. To compare or not to compare, that is the question. Okay, no, really, it's it's really not a question. It's going to happen. And I think that sometimes we will put way too much energy into not comparing that you won't be able to be present. So just simply be present and conscious and know when to compare and when not. You see what I'm saying? Because comparison is a real thing. My, you know, if you ex if your wife is in a relationship with you and let's pretend she has someone else, she might have the comparison and it may not sound like a comparison, but she might say, you are the best, that's comparison. You are the best, you know, listener. You know, that's comparison. Whether it's comparison to an ex or her cousin mm. or her mama or her daddy, it's still a comparison. Comparisons are reality. Mm. It's how you do it mm. so that it's not condescending all the time or um, so it doesn't promote a bad, you know, energy or atmosphere mm. is what I think is important. I, I think that you know, we, we just gonna do it. And so when you, when it comes down to like, you know, shifting the mind, mind renewal is also in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Renew your mind. So renewing your mind to me is a state of detoxing. It's a constant, uh, you know, what are you rehearsing now over and over in your mind? So in my relationship where you are present, Am I renewing my mind to consider that this is not Bob? Mm. This is not Bob. Mm. It, it, it's not to completely uh, excavate all of Bob experiences from your whole life and experience. Because if we all are experiences to excavate whatever experience we've had prior with someone else would to be to unsh unsharpen who you are today. Mm. There may be some appreciation of your present relationship that you have as a result of the comparison. Mm -hmm. There may be some of the development that you have as of today as a result of that previous experience. And you know that. Mm -hmm. See, I compare myself to myself all the time, like I did at the very beginning of this interview. I am grateful to be on this side of the experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. me telling you that I was in a dark place is because I knew that I existed in a bunch of light before. <laughs> yeah. So comparison is a thing. And I know when people say that comparison is a thief of joy, yeah. <clears throat> I can't remember if that's a scripture, to be honest with you. It's, it's but, not a scripture. It's, <clears throat> uh, somebody, uh, it's like a... A quote. Yes, yeah, that quote, yeah. I forgot who okay. said it, but I think Theodore Roosevelt said it or something. But anyway. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, I don't remember seeing that in the Bible, but if I missed it, it's possible, guys. I'm just telling my truth. Yeah. But it can be the thief of joy if your if your comparison is condescending to you. Mm. If I am putting myself down to look at Sean, why can't let me tell y'all something? This brother been doing podcasting. I have only dreamed and hope. I started a podcast. I stopped podcasting. Then I started doing a live video uh, interview segment. I stopped doing that too. If I were to compare myself to Sean in a way that puts me down, then it may paralyze my purpose and my ability to move forward. That's when it's a thief of joy. If it puts me in a position where I'm constantly feeling like that what I bring to the table has no value, it's still in my joy. If it's putting me in a position where I'm decreasing um, how I show up because I don't feel good enough and worthy enough because he's consistent. And I'm talking about this brother is on his tongue, okay? Then, then it's the thief of joy. But if I compare myself up and I say, I want to be consistent like Sean, that ain't still in no joy. That's personally developing. 
You see what I'm saying? So if your comparison is inspiring or something you're aspiring to become greater, but if it's condescending and it is positioning you to uh, cast down yourself, then that's when I feel like it's a thief of joy. I love that. I'm glad you put that like, yeah, that's a word that'll preach because it's easy to scroll on Instagram and, and look at your reels and be like, why can't I teach like Aquila? <laughs> and they don't know I was out here bleeding last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. They don't even know. Mm, and you know, and, and now that you say that, because I told myself that I'm going to create a video when just what goes on in a 24 hour period in my personal life. Because like you were saying that I'm consistent, that consistency comes with a price, comes with a cost because uh, you know we have little kids. You know, I started all over, you know, rebranding, you know, you, you know me from Dr. Love show, you know what I'm saying? So that compared to now, my life looks totally different from the time I wake up in the morning to the time that I go to bed. And I was just going to create a video of me waking up from the time I brush my teeth, from the time I have to pick my seven-year-old up from school and then go pick up my two boys from ABA therapy because they have autism to coming home and giving them baths and, and having dinner together. And then checking on the wife and see how she's doing and then give her my Kanye rant and then be selfish because I ain't even take the time to check on her to see how her day went. Right. So now I got to check myself and be like, I just ran my mouth and I didn't see how she was doing. And then on top of that, I'd be like, oh, let me try to get this podcast out. <laughs> so then I got to end. put on several platforms, wait for it to upload. Blah, 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 blah. Write captions for it and all that. Listen. Yeah. People don't be knowing. They don't know. <laughs> but I'm I'm going I'm going to show the world because I, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm going to shock the world, but people don't know what I'm trying to shock the world for. I'm like, well, you don't know what I'm up against. So, uh, and not in a bad way, but I, I heard, and I don't want to get too off track, but I heard a guy say on the podcast I was listening to, he said he wished more men of integrity will step up and create channels, YouTube channels, and create more content so we can kind of level the playing field when yes. it comes to function and dysfunction. Now, you know, if you do the dysfunctional things, what you do, if you do it, whatever, but at least give us the option to have good and bad. Yeah. You know, give us the option. And he was saying that because a lot of times guys have families, they have responsibilities, they don't, they don't have time to create content or touch other people. So I was like, you know what? Let me just do this in a, a day in the life of Sean and still be able to add value, but still have a, uh, I won't say balance, but still uh, keep my family intact where they still have me. Um, and then I can be able to create content as well. Cause my wife is behind me 110%, but it comes with a price because this is what I love to do. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my Kanye rant. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do soon. No, but it's true. That would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because people have no idea that, you know, consistency means cutting people off, sacrificing, you know, saying no to certain things. You're like, wait, so you got to do this instead. You know what I mean? So, there, you know, some people don't realize. Let me, let me ask you this. What do you think is the biggest struggle in relationships today where if you can say this is where you're going wrong what would you say when it comes to relationships in general i would say first of all relevance is i think social media relevant to the time mm -hmm. if we're talking about people who has all of this exposure i would say social media a lot now although i know i want people to watch my stuff too i'm just telling <laughs> my truth no. um it's the it's the array of different advice out there mm. like i said that really begins to pit people against each other and then i would say in general personally i think it's the war against man versus woman instead of us having the the the, the idea and the reality that god made us to be partners and not enemies so that's like my overall and then my relevance like for the time 
So the time for the relevance for the time, social media and the different exposure that's out there. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like to me, like we in the garden, we minding our business, Sean, we doing good. Oh, hey, Sean, I like your tree. Do I like y'all's tree too over there? Get it, girl. Let me get some of the limits. And then boom, the enemy come up and was like, don't y'all want to sell us some lie, some something that we really probably already have or is due to have, receive or experience in time. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to go ahead and trying to fast forward it so we get caught up in trying to get it sooner than our season we're trying to get it before it's meant to be ours we're trying to get what probably ain't even meant to be ours or what we already possess but just don't have the perspective to realize yet so that's what i think so when i go and look at you know let's say some women want men like you know you sean who are productive and they're doing their things and they're taking their kids and this that, and the other but you didn't wake up like this you had to grow you had to evolve you had to become who you are today, right? Mm-hmm. So people be like, Akuma, you know, I, some dude messaged me and was like, I would love to have a woman like you with, with your mindset. I'm like, man, do you know, do you know how I've been through? Let me tell y'all, how about that? Let me tell you about that man heart that I broke when I first, when I was 25 years old and I had an affair. And that is the pivotal reason mm-hmm. that I live in truth today because living in them lies cost me my marriage. Mm-hmm. But could you have been with me then? Mm-hmm. Could you have loved me through that? You see what I'm saying? So... I didn't wake up and become who I am today that somebody may think is valuable, somebody may think is, is worthy, and I'm and you may call you may consider me a, a a good candidate today. But I remember, you know what I'm saying, some concerns <laughs> that my husband had, you know what I mean? And I wasn't a loose woman. That was the only man I'd ever been with. However, he, I remember him saying, Babe, you're too nice. Mm-hmm. People misread that, men misread that, and I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. till I got it and then I had to lose something to get that message to get that understanding so if I look if people look at what they see online and they get, become attracted to attracted to what they see they go try to shape prematurely who they're with to become something they see and that to me is comparable to the enemy saying don't you want to be like God when I'm already made in his image I just got to grow in my perspective my experience and my maturity to be able to operate in that, in the way that God has maybe called or, or sees me to do it in the future. Because right now, he just want me to take care of this good God. Mm. That's what he want me to do. Mm. Just right now, today, he just want, and for some people, many people, especially women, we, we got high drive, high purpose, but that's God's fault. When God made us by purpose, you know, on purpose and for a purpose, that's his fault. We are overwhelming with that, but we got to learn how to manage that reality of all that excitement and anxiousness that can come with being purpose driven. And we out here trying to fix and shape and fix everything. Hey, hey, you over there, this over there. We got to learn how to contain that mm-hmm. and be able to exist in a relationship and just hang out in the garden mm-hmm. and allow him to have his, 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 his pace and allow him to, you know what I'm saying, do his thing in his own way. And so that, that, I, that, that right there to me is it, perpetuated just through internet, through social media, you know, where we trying to advance him to be, listen, you can start looking like God today. 1-800, look like God. You know what I mean? Like we try, <laughs> that's to me, you know what I'm saying? And then the overall is, like I said, just being able to not be against one another. We're all trying to find relevance and, and, and be affirmed sometimes through that, you know, like, my pain is heavy. Well, my pain is heavy. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't got to have babies. Well, you ain't got to, you know, we don't, come on. We don't, we don't got to have these, those are unhealthy comparisons mm-hmm. because it's comparing apples to oranges. Mm-hmm. You're not a man. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not a man. You're not a woman. So we've been pit against each other, <clears throat> which makes it difficult for us to see the value in one another. And then that's why all the other you know, I feel like the smaller details come mm-hmm. where does a man, you know, how, how does a woman treat a man who don't make as much money as him mm-hmm. or vice versa? How does a man's security exist being with a woman who makes more than him? When mm-hmm. we understand the nature of the relationship is to grow and be fruitful and multiply together, then we're not in competition. Mm-hmm. He's not unfavorable because he don't make as much. And she ain't got to be, you know what I'm saying? Uh, haughty or mm-hmm. degrading mm-hmm. to be to be to make more so that's just an example but 
You see what I mean? It just, mm. we don't have to pit against each other. So those are two things that I personally feel. Mm. I love okay. that. I, yeah, I love that because like you said, when when a woman says something and then a man be like, well, because men got it like this, like I can't stand that because for one, you're not validating that person's feelings and you're taken away from the conversation because they're, they're expressing what they are dealing with. If you're dealing with something as a woman, for me to try to compare that is just unhealthy. I'm just disregarding your feelings. Yes. Um, and I had to learn that over time. You know, a lot of times exactly. you get in that whole defensive state. You be like, "Whoa, you ain't you, you ain't got it as bad as men because I got to get up." You know, it's the whole like I seen the video with Chris Rock where he was talking about the only thing, or the only people that only people that's love unconditional is women and dogs because uh a man has to have some because he said like with women they have like hey girl what you do i mean no no I, they, another woman will ask another woman like about your kids and things of that nature or if a man if we ask a question about a woman he first thing he's gonna ask me is man what she look like <clears throat> if it's vice versa as a woman you talking to a guy her girlfriend gonna say girl what do you do <laughs> true story true story you know so true story that's good that's yeah good. so that's that's but I, I hear what you're saying i was just like yeah i had to learn that when people are venting let them say what they need to say you meet them halfway and uh you know you just help them find a solution and you know maybe one day they'll listen to you <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> Aquila, this has been an amazing episode. There's so much more I want to talk to you about, but I want to be respectful of your time. Let the Brave Hearts community know how they can get in touch with you. As, as he has mentioned, Instagram is Aquila Mavics, and um, that's where I'm hanging out these days. And then I am um, also adding that same content to my YouTube. I'm going, I'm getting better, y'all. I'm getting better. So, um, I'm actually transitioning that over. So it'll be a Quilomatics as well or the inspirationalist. So that's how you'll find me. And then I'm, I'm excited because I'll be actually starting a group coming in October. Um, and it's called Living Nude. Mm. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Thanks. <laughs> <Hey>, so. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> well, Bravehearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you get in touch with Aquila. I just want to acknowledge you for uh, your transparency. I want to acknowledge you for uh, standing tall in the face of adversity and, and things happen and life happens, but you give so much of yourself to help others. I want to acknowledge you for having a servant's heart. As long as I've been knowing you, you just have a servant's heart from day one. And I know these are like core values of who you are as a yeah. person. So um, I want to acknowledge that. And just continue to do what you do. And um, when you need to take your break, you take your break. Because when you come back, I know you come out swinging for the fences. So <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. I just want to acknowledge you for those things.